Sabah al Khair, Walker Tov, good morning. I never walked on this path before. So I'm walking alongside the eastern retaining wall of the Temple Mount. Well, I guess on the western wall, it's more the retaining wall. And we're just above Gethsemane here. And there's a reason I'm doing this. A couple of reasons. One of them I didn't think about that I'd be able to come in here. I just asked the security there and they said it was okay. So if there's an exit. I was just concerned there was an exit on the other side. So the reason I'm doing it is because of the reading of Ezekiel. 47, which is our reading today. We just have a few snippets, so I'll encourage you afterwards to read the whole chapter. And here we're walking along by the Golden Gates, and I was never this close to them, but I didn't walk this path. And here we have the, the famous Golden Gates. As you see, they're right across from Gethsemane. And right in behind them is the Dome of the Rock. And the, obviously then the original place of the Solomon's Temple, rebuilt by Herod after the rebuilding from the exile. And it only counts as one rebuilding because they still want the third temple. And this is also a big subject matter of the readings today. The occasion is because of a celebration that went worldwide over the church that is the seat of the Bishop of Rome. The Lateran John, Lateran, St. Peter's Basilica is actually not the, the Bishop's see in Rome, it's St. John Lateran. And that's a whole other theme we don't need to go into now, but there's a nice, we're in a nice moment right here where we see Gethsemane, uh, the Church of All Nations. We're overlooking the Kidron Valley, which has the Christian burial ground. You can see a lot of tombs down there. And on the 2nd of November, we actually filmed closer in the road down here just beneath us. And we got to see even the crosses on those uh, burials. And then we have the, all the Jewish cemetery, which would have been the very first one here developed in the course of our monotheisms and the Valley of Josephat in the, in the book of Joel, the prophet. So November is also the time when we ponder our decease because of the decline of nature in the Northern Hemisphere. And that association helps us to ponder that we won't be evergreens in this life, that we will lose our leaves and leave our losses behind, <laughs> lose our leaves and lose our losses, and we will go to eternal life. And it's good for us to have that. That's a, a wise person won't ignore where the train is going, where the jet will, will fly to. We are jetting around the world from the kitchen to the living room to the garden, or from the car to the office to the restaurant, back home, to the supermarket. We're moving all the time, but we need to know where we're going. And it's obviously clear that also our train is going to reach the end station in this world. <clears throat> and that's why it's good to ponder these things. But I need to get to the reason why I wanted to be on this valley today, the Kidron Valley, which is down beneath us. And we saw that on the, if you wish to go back to see it, on the 2nd of November, we walked through there. So that'll be a reference point just to figure out the geography a little bit for you. I hit a stone there. So the prophet Ezekiel was taken by God out from the temple up to, to the northern gate, which would be the Damascus gate. And actually last night I did the German <clears throat> little live stream on YouTube, starting there, and it's still uploading. It had a very high definition uh, 
photo setting that I didn't notice and it's been terribly slow to upload but it will be there soon I think and we're looking now into the Kidron Valley and so Ezekiel then is brought by God's angel or he was led by God around on the eastern side so that's where we just walked and then it says on the southern side he's and we're almost there he sees a trickle of water coming out Another good place to have filmed this, just to understand the geography would be over at Gethsemane or on the other side there, maybe up at the Seven Arches Hotel. But it's also good to be close to the Kidron Valley because you can see better. That's kind of part of the story today. And now we can appreciate the height of the pinnacle of the temple, which would be above this again, the turret. So <clears throat> you can notice the Herodian stones with the margin all around the periphery of the stones. It's a decorative element. So the water started to trickle down this valley and this is a desert area. Very little rain gets here. In fact, the Mount of Olives is kind of the rain line when any clouds that come, go to the east from here are already deplete of the rain because and coming in from the Mediterranean, they're carrying, they might be carrying a load of, of humidity, of rain, of water. And then when they hit the height of Jerusalem, which is 800 meters more or less, on the Mount of Olives, then they drop the rain and there's very little to fall in the desert. Only very rarely do they get rain over there. So all this region is a desert. And in some languages, in Spanish, Italian, it's called torrente. A torrent is the word we have in English, torrential rain. And at, these are the valleys that are dry most of the time, but then they fill up with water. So now we're at the southern side of the Temple Mount. There you see the tip of the Alexa uh, Mosque Dome that we often view from Notre Dame. And this um, is the southern side and the city of David is all along here, down there. So the water trickles out and then Ezekiel is asked to walk in the water uh, down, these, uh, down the Kidron Valley toward the Dead Sea. It's called the Salty Sea in the text. And as he walks down a thousand cubits, that's from your elbow to your wrist, he it's up to his knees and then they tend to walk another thousand and it's up to his waist and then he can't walk anymore he has to swim and this is an incredible Im Im image for the people here that there's so much water coming but where is it coming from it's coming from under the altar it's coming from god the lord sits above the waters that's a famous image also in the scriptures because the water is such a source of life and God gives life. And so here we are at the Kidron Valley. And then he goes down to the Dead Sea and there's more fish in the Dead Sea, in the Salty Sea, than there is in the Mediterranean. They call that the Big Sea at that time in that text. And then there are fishermen all the way from Angeli to Angelim, Angeli to Angelim. Nobody knows where Angelim is. But the fact that it's all lined with fishermen fishing would be a total surprise in the Dead Sea. And then he's brought back by the prophet, uh, by the angel, and he's brought back to Jerusalem up along the Kidron Valley. And on both sides in this desert, it's com and you know the road from here to Jericho, it's more or less that same type of aridity. And both sides are completely covered with fruit trees. And they give fruit every month, fresh fruit. And even the leaves are good for healing, for medicine. That's textual from chapter 47. But most, most of this text is omitted for the reading. Because in the liturgy, the idea is not a study time. It's a time of prayer and to get to the nucleus of the message. And so... Obviously, the message is then how the life comes from God's throne in his temple and it transforms our arid earth 
into fertile and health-giving, life-giving, life-healing reality, gift, gift from God. The clouds hampered the sunrise this morning a little bit. And then in the, the gospel reading for this Feast of the Dedication of this, of this uh, Basilica in Rome is from the cleansing of the temple, which always needs to happen because we're living in a world with all the conflicts and all the challenges and many times we don't follow God's Spirit. And so we are, if you will, we are infected, hurt, broken, wounded, and jealousies and envies and greed and all these things take over our soul. Anger, violence, destruction, hurt, so many, many cycles of, of evil prevail over life. And then we have that promise that that temple will be cleaned also in us. It's the work of grace cleansing us all the time. And the second reading that's chosen is how we are temples of the Spirit. So not only is the Spirit coming out, the, the waters of God coming from the temple to cleanse us, but we ourselves become temples of the Holy Spirit. And that's an amazing, amazing climax of process preparing us for the resurrection of the dead and for life forever in eternal life with God. So people, God bless you. See you later alligators. Now the sun is getting stronger and this is nice. We'll switch over to a short one for Instagram. God bless you all. See you later, alligators. Might have a different surprise tomorrow. <laughs>